last year's Jewish Film Festival. Yes, this is last Jewish Film Festival, last year's trailer. Mm -hmm. One of these days. One, two, ready, go. Wow, what a good time, a good way to begin. And we saw just such a variety of uh, faces and scenes and weather, I must say, a lot of different weather. And uh, but more more importantly, I, we have two wonderful people here to talk about Jewish film. It's part of our series on Jewish arts and culture. First, I want to introduce Michal Goldman. Uh, Michal Goldman uh, is the founder of the Boston Jewish Film Festival in 1989. Such a young woman, I don't know how she did it. She must have been a small child with a lot of uh, precociousness. And uh, it was started in 1989. And now we're also going to meet uh, Ariana Cohen Halberstam, who's the current artistic director of the film festival. So I thought in the span of 32 years, it would be very in interesting to have the founder and to have someone who's carrying it on uh, in, in a very beautiful way. So I'm going to start by just asking Michal, what was the impetus, if you will? It was 1989. What was going on? that led you to do this and i understand as you told me we were the second jewish film festival in the united states where was the first the first was san francisco they had uh, been uh, they had been going for a number of years and um i had been living in san francisco in the early 80s and saw that was the, my first encounter with what could be called jewish film i never thought of such a sort of subcategory of film and filmmaking. I am, a, I am a filmmaker. I was a film editor. I had worked in Hollywood. I worked on The Exorcist. I worked on many documentaries. And uh, living in San Francisco, suddenly there was this uh, sort of new way that one could think about film what could, it, it, it called Jewish film. And I went and I saw those films and was very inspired. And my my own first film, which was the first film to be made about klezmer music, A Jump in Night in the Garden of Eden, the first film that I directed and produced, um, uh, I started in the early 80s, was a direct inspiration of, of, the, of the San Francisco Jewish Film Festival. I don't think I would have been able con to conceptualize it otherwise. So moving here to Boston, um, I... Uh, I was encouraged, people knew about the Klezmer film, and I was encouraged by a man named Norton Sherman, who was a very important uh, philanthropist in the Jewish world. He wanted me, first he had me, we showed some films from the National Center for Jewish Film, some old films. I don't think it was Yiddle, in the, Yiddle with the Fiddle, but it could have been, it was that kind of of work and much to my astonishment, 250 people came. I mean, we sold the, every, every folding chair was, was full. So then Norton said, okay, you should do a festival. He wanted me to do an Israeli film festival. I didn't want to. I said, I wanna show films that I want to see 
And I want to see more of this sort of subcategory of film, which is actually happening in many parts of the world, which is looking at the Jewish experience. Let's bring that here. So that was the impetus. So I would like to ask you at that time, in 1989, was there any place that was collecting besides the natural, was the National Jewish Center for Film collecting films from all over the world or mostly Yiddish films? No, they were collecting films from all over the world and they were also distributing. So this work, they were acting as distributors too. Right, right. So, so right. to me, they were, they were a great resource um, right. as an archive. Right. And they do a festival in the spring, so I just give them a plug it's as well. Them. In fact, Sharon Revo, I met her, you know, I right. sat with her because right. I knew that I would want to show at least one of the older films right. from her in our first film festival. Right. And um, he had not yet begun to do a festival, so. Oh, right. Your film, uh, 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 what is it called, The Jumping? A Jumping Night in, Night the, in the Garden of Eden was Freilich basically... Freilich in Gan Eden. In Gan Eden, a Freilich in Gan Eden, really uh, put uh, the, Klezmer, uh, the Klezmer Conservatory band on the map. Yeah. And I believe one of the shows you cover is uh, when they were on Garrison Keillor. Or yes, was it another at show? End, no, at the end of the at the end of the film, they perform on Prairie Home Companion. Companion, right? Or so this is uh, right, right. In the, in the film. And, it's, and it's a fantastic film. It's a film that really. Uh, going to be? Can I say it's it's actually starting on the twenty sixth of this month. It's going to be showing for two weeks. Oh. In the virtual theater of the Amherst Cinema in Amherst, so. Good. Um, you can go. You can see it. I know. recommend it. It's a terrific, another wonderful film of Michal was about uh, the, the union, if you will, uh, apartments in, was it the Bronx? Yes. Yes, but where people were, 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 yeah, what did you call that? It gave me the title, it's I'm sorry. Home in Utopia. It's a film oh. about a co communist, Jewish immigrant communist cooperative community. Right. It's it was so a beautiful film, beautiful film. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's move to Ariana for a minute. Ariana. Okay, there was uh, the second film festival and uh, in the world. And now how many are there in the world? It's, it's really hard to say exactly. Um, over 250. And I think that's sort of loosely defining what a Jewish festival is. We, you know, there are Jewish film festivals that are a weekend run by a synagogue. And then there are two week long festivals and year round Jewish right. film organizations. So right. there's a it's become it's become you know Mikkel was the second to to bring it um, to the states or the I, I think probably the second in the world, um, and now you know there are Jewish film festivals everywhere across the globe, which is and are great. are you in contact with people? Do people cooperate? Do they know what films that you're that, that they're showing in various places? Absolutely, and um, there's a Jewish film presenters network, which is sort of a, a loose organization that meets um, every other year talks about themes and meets with um you know meets, meets filmmakers meets distributors but um i'm in touch uh, several times a month with with you know the people running the jewish film festival right. in philadelphia and dc and right. we're we're a close community we work, we play nicely together <laughs> so yeah it's great i mean it's nice it's you can talk to your colleagues about what films they've seen you know if somebody travels to a festival um, and sees a great Jewish film, they'll tell you about it. Um, which, you know, if you can't get the filmmaker to come in for whatever reason, who was a good guest, who's a good speaker, it's, it's really nice to have a, right. a big community. I'm sure it was very different when, uh, Michael, you were, had San Francisco to talk to and that's it, so. Right, now Michael, yeah. Michael found a, a, a poster, uh, to Ferret, if you put it up, of the first film festival. Now, I want to just compare the trailer that you just watched. Right. Did you what... Now, to Ferret, if you could put up first our, our um, mock-up of our logo. Okay. There it is. Oh, it's a little bit blocked. But anyway, you can see most of it. You can see how it's, it's we, we, we found our way to a young um, um, artist, sort of calligrapher, designer, and you see how she's done it. She's done it, written this by hand, and then cut it out and kind of pasted it onto a board. 
and then that's going to be copied and that's going to be our logo here. and then if you could show the second the second thing this now is the mock-up of if the ferret puts it up will be okay. the mock-up of our of our program yeah it's coming up it's coming first up. year and uh Okay, here it is. Now there again, you see this is sort of mocked up, but you can see it's it's at the MFA, and I didn't remember showing it Lowe's and Copley Place, but we must have. And then <laughs> right. the films that we that we showed the first year just listed here. We had no trailer, of right. course. And right. um, and Uncle Moses, for instance, is one of right, right. Uncle uh, Moses was an older film, right? Right, right. that came from the National Center. Yeah, Marie Schwartz, very interesting film. And yes, and I, I, you know, my, I, I worked very closely with the programmer at the MFA, who was a man named Bo Smith, not Jewish. Uh -huh. but he was connected in the way that Ariana now is. He was connected to, to festivals all over the world, the great ones, you know, at right. Berlin and everywhere. And he was noticing the emergence of films on Jewish themes. And he had been saving brochures in a filing, you know, in a folder in his filing cabinet, sort of waiting, I think, for somebody like me to <laughs> come. And when I came along, he said, oh, I've been waiting for somebody like you, you know, here are all these films, and it would be fantastic to bring them together and show them. So, right. were there many uh, were 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 there many film festivals uh, in Boston besides a uh, the a Boston Jew, a film festival? Were there any other ethnic festivals at all? You know, not so much. I think this was kind of the beginning of that era. It happened quickly after. Right. But I think the first year, actually, we won a Boston um, Critics Film Critics Award for the program, right. which, was, right. which was really right. as more Bose work than mine. You know, right. I was just learning. But, but it was good to have the B uh, MFA as a as as a place to uh, exhibit these films. I think it really brought P people into the a MFA, and it was it was a wonderful thing for both the Jewish community and for the MFA. I just want to say one uh, more, one last thing before you move on. Um, for me, there was an introduction to the sense that there were many different Jewish audiences in Boston. Mm -hmm. And I remember in particular the Russian, I forget what film we showed. We showed a film, it may have been, I don't know, maybe it was, almost, I don't remember which film, but it was a film that attracted the Russians. Right. And they came, there were many of them. They stood in line, you know, the way you have to stand in line outside the MFA. And the doors opened, and these people assumed a kind of phalanx, phalanx. <laughs> and they entered en masse, and they swept aside all ushers, all ticket takers, all. So, an I aggressive mean, group, an aggressive group. Of course. Right. You know, and then I, I then I realized that we we have to do outreach. We have to show films that appeal to each of those communities, and we have to do outreach to them right. to bring them right. together. In 1989, there were quite a few yes. uh, Russian speakers. Now we have less yes. of them, of course, as 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 the time has gone by. So, uh, Ariana, I just wanted to. Uh, say to you now uh, you know you probably have to look through how many films uh that, during a year before you get your your roster if the number uh, is going up it's close to 600 now including shorts so wow. it's, it's a lot of film watching uh, how <laughs> I mean, many do, right. usually in, in in other in normal times i would be going to two film festivals a year where i'll you know watch over 50 films in a week so it's a that that sort of helps with that number. <laughs> right, but I hope you take notes so you know which day you I were do. there. Or uh, so how, how many films do you, ha do you come down to when, when you get to the festival itself? Right, so that's, I mean, I wish I had a, well, I guess you saw at the end of that trailer that um, the logo has changed quite a bit since 1989 because we 
become something completely different in a way where we're the Boston Jewish Film Festival, I think still is dealing with a lot of the same questions when programming as Mickle was. But um, now because we're doing programs around the year, there's a lot more room for play. So you you mentioned that there was a push to start it as a as an Israeli film festival. And, you know, three years ago, we decided to incorporate an Israeli film festival and we do a disabilities festival and we do films around the year as preview. So, you know, whereas the festival itself maybe has about 50 films, if there's a film that I love, I can find room for it somewhere else in the year, which is really nice. Right, right. and you recently changed your name to Boston Jewish Film. Big, big change in the name. <laughs> Rather than festival, I guess there must have been some people upset with that. I have a feeling. No, I mean, we still have the fest. We still it's have just, the festival. Right, but it's but um, now you're all year round, right? Right. You know, right, we thought right. we were going to do this big branding change, and we right, dropped right. five letters, but you know, <laughs> six letters. <laughs> six letters. Well, it's uh, for some people that's very important. Six letters. So, so okay. Now we get to the the, the real uh, meat of the question uh, that I have. Why I have Michal and Ariana, and I have this thirty year span of this festival. How did you and how do you define or can you one define? What is a Jewish film? I mean, you you said it, you, you the, the idea of a Jewish film genre didn't hit you uh, until let's say thirty five years ago, but since then, is there some criteria that that have has developed of defining what a Jewish film is? Are you asking me? I'm asking Michala, then I'll ask Ariana. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I um, let's see. I resisted the question, which of course emerged immediately because I found the question kind of, um, uh, what's the word, it hamstrung me? It, it, it was limiting instead of um, what, what I wanted to, to be able to open, open our eyes to here in Boston. I wanted to make a, sort of a, a forum, a place, where we could come and we could see many, many, many different ex expressions and um, depictions of Jewish identity in many different contexts, um, some extremely secular, some religious, some experimental in their language, some very commercial in their language, some documentary, some, you know, wide in many languages, some not made by Jews, um, some where even the, the sort of characters are not, the central characters may not, not even be Jews, but there is, a, there is a Jewish issue there. There's a question there that, um, that confronts Jews, that relates to us. I, I wanted to be very free so that we here in Boston, which which felt quite provincial to me. In it was a village when I came here in the 70s. Yeah. It was I very thought, right. You know, let's take a look at how people all over the world are are thinking about this identity right. and see what happens. Right. You know, uh, the, the idea of a genre of films is, is, is as old as anything. There are Westerns right. and there are whodunits, right? And there are... <laughs> Really and there are detective it. ones. I mean, so the yeah. idea of a genre is not a is not a, not a foreign thing. A Jewish Jew, Jewish film is not a genre. Not not a genre. Okay. I I I think not. All right, that's good. That's good. I'm glad. That's why I posed that because I didn't think of it either. But, uh, but so Ariana, let's great. let's let's take it now to this. Uh, how do you see it? The same way or? Well, I it's hard. I, yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. I think I. I, I think my definition of a Jewish film changes daily, maybe hourly. Um, <laughs> okay, on let, let me get, get you in a, and then I'll call you a little <laughs> yeah, later. Yeah, I'll check back at the I'll end check of back the back a little bit, right. Um, no, I, I mean, you know, there's a joke among Jewish film programmers that when we go to watch a movie, we're looking for the mezuzah on the door or the menorah in the back of the house to see if, you know, if it's a film we like, if we can make it work. But I think... I think it is, you know, Michael had said something about a Jewish spirit to the films. I think there's, the the program I come up with has less to do with it, each individual film and sort of how they work in tandem um, because the festival is about showing a broad view of what Jewish culture is 
um, Jewish, helping, you know, sort of using film to help people connect to different aspects of Jewish identity, Jewish history, right. um, Jewish heroes, you know, films, sometimes there's no mention of someone's Jewishness, but the film is about someone that we think of, you know, broadly as, as a Jewish person and, and we can have a Jewish conversation around it. So I think a film might not be Jewish necessarily watching it at home alone on your screen that might be Jewish in a theater because of the conversation that that comes out of it being part of a Jewish film festival. Um, so what a Jewish film is, I guess, is sort of a film that can inspire a Jewish conversation, okay. if that That's makes good. sense. I like that. That's very. That's a very good way of seeing it. Yeah. Now I want to go to a, a, a subsection. Yes, Michal, please, Michal. I mean, yeah. Sometimes there's also sort of Jewish trouble. You know, we we show films that um, make us sometimes confront very difficult uh, sort of moral questions or or political questions. Sure. That, um, that we broadly, as as a community or as people who identify as Jews, we perhaps need to confront because here it is, you know, right. not to be a Jew. Yeah, I've I've been fascinated uh, by how many films, contemporary films, still deal with the Shoah. Uh, it seems that. Uh, it's now 75 years since the end of the war. Many of the survivors themselves are gone. Uh, their children are here. Their grandchildren are here. But I, but all over the world, uh, there seems to still be people making films about about the Shoah. I, I, I understand it uh, emotionally that it's a, it's sort of a subterranean stream, <laughs> you know, in Jewish life and Jewish identity uh, that everyone has in a way. Uh, but uh, how do you understand this this prolific amount of material on the Shoah still? Michal, I'll start with you. You watch a lot of films, I know. I don't watch so many films now, actually. I I, I have begun to just want to read books. But um, apart from that, I I it seems to me that um, the kind of films that were being made and could be made in the late 80s, partly because of who was alive, you right. know, what, um, and what, in a sense, was being uncovered and discovered. You know, like I was thinking of Weapons of the Spirit, which, which we showed the first year, which is a film about, um, about, um, Chambon sur Marne, right? Chambon sur Lignon, a Protestant French community that um, at great risk to themselves um, saved any Jew who came. You know, that was me when I saw that. But that was that was news in a way. You know, that there were those kinds of discoveries still. Now I think. Um, well, I noticed actually even later in the, in the 90s, there, be, there, there began to be very powerful films about the, the Holocaust, the Shoah, that were not documentaries. They were dramatic. Mm -hmm. and that allowed for a different kind of um, exploration that was in, less literal, sometimes more poetic. Um, but where things are now, Ariana, I, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Just to comment on that, there was this whole issue of whether you can have, quote unquote, any kind of art uh, the, after the Shoshoa, mm -hmm. that all you could do basically is documentary, right? But to have a dramatic film or have a, a side story, et cetera, that, uh, uh, that really was not necessarily considered to be uh, as acceptable. But now you're saying, uh, Ariana, you still see a lot of feature films rather than documentaries? We see both. I mean, I think there's there's definitely um, a lot of documentaries coming out from the third generation. A lot of people rushing to get to tell these stories before we're, you know, first person before we're no longer able to. Um, I think it's inevitable that these will be the bulk of Jewish films because I think this is the major event in Jewish history in the last hundred years, arguably. Um, 
I think what's interesting is I, I do, you know, and Michael, you can agree or disagree with me. You probably know as well as I do, but I think the, this type of, well, and it sort of relates to what you were talking about, Moshe, where the, the questions around making films about the Holocaust um, have changed. And I think, you know, we're still seeing narrative films. We're still seeing some that are not that dissimilar to ones I saw 10 years ago. But we are seeing new kinds of films, too. And I think the way people are telling stories and the stories they're telling have changed. Um, I, you, were, you, Moshe, were the moderator for a panel we did I think in 2015 or 2016 about this film called The Last Laugh. Um, right. That was the one about whether Great you film. can make jokes about the Holocaust, um, you know, and it, with Mel Brooks and Sarah Silverman. People are, are still figuring out, I think, um, how to tell these stories, right. how to talk about the Holocaust. Right. Um, and right. I think they will continue right. to. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So uh, in the beginning, the Israeli film industry, if you recall, was quite uh, sparse. There weren't many films, or great films, if you will, coming out of Israel. There were famous ones, Salak Sabati, you know, in the 50s. And then in the last 25, 30 years, we've seen a plethora of really interesting Israeli films. Uh, how do you try to balance? Because uh, now I'm seeing Israeli films that don't deal with the conflict which is every film used to deal with the conflict, you know. Uh, I just want to say that the second yeah. year, our second festival, 1990, right. was an Israeli film festival. Ah. Only Israeli films. And we basically traced the evolution of the state through film. So we used, we showed some very, very old, you know, some silent material um, from 20s, all the way through this sort of nascent, you know, there were documentaries and there was, there was a film, a, a film industry that was already producing quite sophisticated and, and powerful right. material, not right. only about the conflict. Right. But, yeah, but I'm saying I'm seeing more and more of that, obviously, and you, you have, you know, uh, comedies and you have a, a really slice of life uh, material rather than necessarily only quote unquote if you will, political stuff. I think uh, so. yeah. But again, uh, the balance between uh, between the, let, let us say uh, the light and the heavy. I mean, I'm always you know uh, screwball comedies. Are there any really Jewish or Jewish screwball comedies being done? Which I think I think there's a I've seen a few that aren't uh, bad. But uh, do you find that it, that, that most of the stuff is uh, heavier stuff, if you want to use that that term, Ariana, and then we'll get to Michael. I, I think the being able, I think what a sort of a trick we have is being able to use almost any Israeli film um, in a Jewish festival, because I think the question often is, will they include Jewish content? And you know, I, I said we could make anything Jewish, but you know, some things are harder to make Jewish than right. others. So, you know, I, an American, we showed, I think. The last time we were in a theater for the festival, which was 2019 now, we opened up with a comedy, a family sort of darkish comedy. Um, and it was a very Jewish film. But I think a film, the film didn't have to necessarily have yeah. Jewish content. They chose right. to make it about a Jewish family. Israeli films um, that don't have any you know, overt Jewish content are Jewish films. And we can have a conversation about Israeli right. culture around that. Um, so, uh, I think it's rarer to find those. I think maybe part of the reason you see so many, um, Holocaust films showing up in Jewish, in Jewish festivals is because there's the Jewish content and documentaries. It's much harder right. to sort of create it. And I think, you know, Jewish films that are Jewish aren't exclusively Jewish anymore. So a big thing for us is, you know, since. 1989 there have you know boston has an incredible film landscape and we have a queer film festival we have a palestinian film festival an iranian right. film festival a french film festival <laughs> and there often is a lot of overlap with these films because sure. films are not only one thing and we, we we do require premieres usually um so if the film showed up first at the front we tend to work we try to work together with the other festivals right. but right. um Film, you know, like like people, films films have many identities. So, right. 
because yeah. I because I watched quite a bit of Yiddish film over the years, and they had a lot of comedies, and they had a lot oh, of yeah. uh, you know uh, 